Good morning, everybody. Rob has a quick announcement. I do. How's everybody? Awesome, awesome. Thanks for being here today. So, <clears throat> uh, is Brent on? It's always awkward talking about somebody when they're on. But, uh, <laughs> so, you know, Brent is an incredibly generous guy. I, I get to work with him every day for the last six years. And incredibly generous to me. It's one of his actually life missing missions is generosity. So if you've been around Brent at all, you know he's a generous guy. So when we were building this out last year, I mean, he his whole focus was, I want it to be a place that people want to be, right? That's that's was his whole focus for everything. And so I think he did a pretty good job making it friendly and homey and place this to set. Uh, he provides the copier for you guys for free. So now I'm asking something back for Brent here today. So Brent wants photos of this space, but he doesn't want them empty. You know, that's right. the whole thing is if you're going to build a real estate all it's going to be empty. He's like, no empty pictures. Yeah. So you guys today, you guys are all my actors and actresses from my <laughs> warmer crowd. After this meeting, if you can stick around after this meeting, and let's do this for Brent. If you can stick around after this meeting, we have a photographer here, and he's a wedding photographer, so he knows how to position people and whatever. We're going to fake it until we make it today. <laughs> and so we're going to have this full, and then we're going to all move to the cafe, and I'll be mixing there. We're going to move out into the uh, the co-working space. Everybody's going to be working. It's going to look like the the... the most happening real estate office in all of Roseville because it is. That's right. Thank you, thank you. So anyway, so we're going to move around this space. I know some of you have to go and get that, but if you could possibly stay, we'll just position. I don't think it'll take more than 30 minutes. Brandon, you think we can do it in 30 minutes? We'll just move yeah. around and move around the room. Yeah. Even Brent's office. I know he's not here, but, and then uh, one of the big things he wants today is he wants a great picture of this space for me to put a 10 by 10 zoom background behind him here and possibly in Puerto Rico. Because I always, you know, make a cool background. I don't know if you know in the last office and everybody goes, is that your office? And he goes, no, it's just a background. So he said, I want to go. Yeah, that's my office. So anyway, so I'm going to get, uh, Brandon's going to get a great picture today. We're going to blow it up and put it behind him. Um, Puerto Rico in here so he can have his office in the background. So if you can help us with that at the end of this. We'll try to make it really quick. Brandon will make quick work of it. If you can just listen to his direction, we'll be moving around the space and then we'll be done. And Brent will be really, really happy. So awesome. thanks, everybody. All thanks, right. Rob. Can we do that? Can we do that for Brent, guys? It takes like yeah. 30 oh, minutes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. Kicking it off with some Tell Me Something Good, Manu and uh, Margaret have a Tell Me Something Good. Uh, we just accepted a cash offer for my um, listing. It's in 55 Gillis Community. We'll be closing in 10 days. Yay. All right. And then, um, uh, Tom, what do you got? Um, client called me a month ago and said, uh, we need to have, we want to have babies. We want to sell our condo and buy a new home. Uh, and they happen to live in Pasadena. So went down there, got a $900,000 condo listing, uh, got an offer week one, which is awesome, uh, less than what they wanted. So uh, then they want to buy a home too. So that was awesome. And uh, wow. now we're just in the ooh, cream of wheat, sluggish part of the escrow where we're going back and forth and having issues with the agent. However, uh, things are looking good. Uh, it's just one day at a time. So it's a great one day at a time. Awesome. Round of applause, Tom. All right, and then Don and Clark, you guys are doing some crazy things in recruiting. What's happening in your world? Well, we've got a couple things. Uh, uh, just I, I want to just share trust the process. If you just keep at it, keep at it. it it's kind of like you're you're putting up pressure against a dam, and then all of a sudden, a little little bit of uh, uh, water pops out, a little bit more big. That's when you really accelerate pressure, and then when it busts loose, it fills the whole valley, kind of thing. So. Uh, we we're just uh, onboarding. Uh, well, want to welcome, and they're probably on the webcast too. Uh, Greg Messick uh, from Anaheim Hills, Holly Ross from El Dorado Hills, Sophia Panaka from Lincoln, uh, Anthony Lee down in um, actually Hesperia, uh, Mawad, who's commercial out of Oakland, and we're going to be uh, doing his ICA tomorrow. He's very fired up and. And uh, Paul Frank really helped out a great deal with this. Awesome. And then Dana Moge, we just onboarded yesterday, and she's actually in um, Woodland Hills. Yeah. Wow. All oh, over the place. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's two weeks. Hard to keep up. Yeah. And, I just, and, and the reason is when they see the model, it's the opportunity, the collaboration, and the fact they really sense it's agent centric, and we don't kill them with fees. 
I mean, a lot of the brokers are coming from, I mean, they're just nailing it with all these, you know, and they're, they're changing the deal on them all the time. Yeah. And uh, so they're just, when they, and I, it's just a recommendation, when you have somebody interested, sit down and watch the model explain with them. Like uh, Brent, because they, talking about Brent's model? They, they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. And that really has been the key thing. Yeah, Brent, that's Brent's right. model explained, not, not, not a generic. No, no, yeah. Brent's model explained, and, and I'm sure that's going to be revised here soon. There's another one out that's about 10 minutes long, but sometimes I will share that with them, then go to the model explained. Yeah. And that's key, too, Mark, is yeah. you got to sit down. We were offered EXP three different times, I think, and nobody ever sat down and showed us the, the model. model. Yeah. Steve sat down and he broke his pen when he showed us the model. <laughs> uh, he was so, so excited. Intense. And I, re I remember that, that pen going across the restaurant. And I'm like, dang. Clark's like, we're in. The thing is, is that when the momentum starts, all of a sudden, you know, because we've, we've done a lot of appointments, but when the, when the momentum starts, the floodgates open. I mean, I had a, a great uh, conference call with, with Pam Treacy and a person that... that and the key thing, all these people have been to build. They've been to events. And that really has been the, yeah. the significant thing. Yeah. And uh, so we were on a, and this lady, is, and I believe she's going to be joining us. She would be a rock star. We have an appointment set up with a growth, a growth team next week with the XP. So, and that could be significant too. So a couple of things that I heard that I'd like for you all to just take note of. One, momentum, right? Momentum is key. Doesn't happen overnight. They, how long have you guys been with the XP now, Clark? Uh, seriously working because there's a joint date and when you really start working. Yeah. And uh, about a year and a half. Right. So that's 18 months of them working consistently. And now, now they're starting to get some traction. So if you're selling houses or whether you're growing your, your rev share, are you showing up every single day or are you showing up Monday, you know, taking Tuesday off, showing up Wednesday, Thursday, you're always showing up to the Thursday meetings, right? You're always showing up Thursday, maybe work Saturday, take Sunday off his family. Like, are you working consistently or are you inconsistently working? Okay. And then the other thing is, this is a special place to be. You know how many agents I talk to are like, what? You don't have to pay for printing? What? You don't charge me the entire year's yeah. worth of ENO up front? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. So sometimes we're just used to it. We've been here so long. This is really a special place. So just just be, I'm thankful to be here. Raise your hand if you're thankful to be here, guys. Awesome. All right. Just make sure you share that and, uh, and stay, stay, stay joyful. We got a couple more. Tell me something good. Haley has been working hard back there consistently. What are your What do you got going on, Haley? Well, JJ and I are trying to uh, keep this deal alive that we're working on. So we got a low appraisal, and we didn't want our clients to lose the house because they really loved it. So JJ pulled some strings. We got another appraiser out there, and now it's actually over oh. value. Oh. Like they got they got a good appraiser. Extend and keep the ball going. And then I got a call this morning uh, from a gentleman who he's going through divorce, but like I've just been following up, giving value to him. And anyways, he asked if I could come out look at his property. I want to go three hundred. So, wow! So, uh, That's tell me something good. Ralph Block and Haley. <laughs> well, last but certainly not least, Miss Valerie, this is something that we've been working on for a while. Have you have you guys seen the story that or the movie The Notebook? Right before the dude. Uh, yeah. You watch the end and you realize the whole story is about his wife who's like has, has dementia. Well, fast forward, the wife probably died. And that's what happened in this life, in this story. The wife died. She had cancer. And this dude did not want to sell the house. He, he wanted to sell. He had to sell. But he did not want to sell. They built the house together. They lived there for 30 years. They raised a family. Every single agent that showed the property, we follow up and say, hey, what do you think about the house? Is it good? Like, are your clients going to make an offer? They're like, yeah, but... Don't think your seller wants to sell. Yeah. Like uh, at least half a dozen times, there. at least because he stayed there for the show. Oh. Tell, tell him about everything, right? It's the perfect seller. And um, and and he, but they're like, they actually said multiple times, we think you have a case of the notebook on your hands. Right. And so we're like, well, we're just gonna keep working with this guy, work through work through this pain. And um, what happened, gorgeous? I only got it in contract after what four months, I think. Yeah, about four months. Four months being on the market, multiple offers. Yeah. He just was, he actually had so many great offers, but he just turned down. Like, nope, 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 nope. And finally, he uh, got in the face with the price it. he felt comfortable with. And, yeah. 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 So, anyways, that's telling me something good. Good job, Sugar. Yeah. So, we do have some amazing events coming up.
Um, first one I want to touch on, it's actually talking about traction, showing up consistently, and actually helping agents. Um, Alex Dyer is every Friday from 10 to 10.30, and then there's about a 15-minute Q&A. So it's not, not even a full hour. If you're wanting to learn more about KV4, which is a tool we all have access to for free here at EDXP, um, you just go to, you can either be here in person or go to zoomwithalexdyer.com. So that's zoomwithalexdyer.com. If you have any questions. And reach out to me if anyone doesn't know. We're going to teach you how to KV4 like a pro. Maybe like a pro. Maybe. Yeah. Yep. In this room, Friday or on Zoom. And then we have a couple different events. Let's go ahead and pick one. What do we got? All right. So, uh, Career Compass, B. Wellington, he is going to be speaking. His, I guess, the boy named Sue, B. Wellington. Like, I think there's something, there's there's a thing there, but his name is legit B. Wellington. And he is a engaging speaker. Like, have you heard him speak before? He is so engaging. He's going to be talking about, um, was the seven percent listing strategy? How to how to earn seven percent on your listings? Um, and this is also going to meet the the required ethics training for for uh, what is it, NAR CAR required ethics training. So this is free. This is happening September third here in the office. So we'll probably be out there. We'll probably be like two full for everybody in here. And um, anyways, go ahead and sign register for that so we know how many people to plan for. And then what else do we got? Peacock? Yeah, let's do Peacock. So this is the, like, if I was to pick one event for you guys to focus on this month, the month is just kicking off. If there was one event to go to, it would be this one. Bill Pipes, he was the number one coach for Tom Ferry for many, many years. He was actually coaching the top coaches with Tom Ferry. And then he, um, he actually, so one quick, quick bio on this guy. He was dating Mike Ferry. Mike Ferry was the, one of the OG coaches in real estate. You're saying Mike Ferry's daughter, not Mike Ferry. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I need to finish that sentence because I, I killed myself wrong. Really? I killed that off, Bill. Sorry, sorry, Pipes. So he made Mike Ferry's daughter, ended up marrying her, and then um, and then he was, Tom was also working for his dad at the time. Tom ended up starting his own company. Pipes joined him over at, at Tom's other at his new company, and now Pipes has broken off and is doing his own thing with G Three Nation. He is, an, he, he is probably our favorite speaker in terms of like his energy, how he presents, and the knowledge that he shares. So this is going to be happening not net, not this coming Thursday, so where we won't be meeting here, we'll be meeting at PCAR. Some of us have the dates mixed up. But next Thursday, we're meeting at PCAR, August 15th, and it's from 10 to noon at PCAR. And then afterwards, there's going to be the lunch here where we get to hang out with Bill and ask him some questions and just bring agents and just spend some time together collaborating. So that's next Thursday. And then the last event. Um, has anybody felt like a shift in the market in the last few weeks? Right? I've seen some head, heads nod. The the nod that got the thing that got my attention is how many builders picking up the phone and saying, Hey, hey remember me? I got a I got a juicy commission over here for you. Like JMC. Um, so this Tuesday, what, what my team is going to do, you're all more than welcome. Everybody's welcome. 11 to 2, they're doing an event. There'll be food. It'll be a good time. But they've upped their commission to 3.5%. So this tells you one of two things. One, agents are valuable and needed in real estate. If the builders are willing to pay 3.5%, why shouldn't the other buyer? Why shouldn't your seller be willing to pay a buyer's commission? If they're doing it, if they're staging in the houses, if they're doing professional photography, why would they not want to choose? Okay, so this is what I tell sellers all the time when I'm like, do you even really need buyers? Doesn't the internet do everything? I was like, well, JMC is paying three and a half percent. I'm just suggesting you two and a half percent. If it works for JMC, why wouldn't it work for you? So, anyways, three and a half percent. And the second thing is, they're kind of, I'm getting nervous. They're kind of nervous. They wouldn't just be throwing money. They're throwing incentives to pay for solar, and they're increasing the buyer agent commission. So that means now you have to work consistently, like Clark was saying. Don't. I mean, the kids are back in school. That's another time we something good, right? <laughs> right. And so um, don't let off. Don't be, don't take off. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to take a week. Just catch my breath. We just keep going. Just keep going. So anyways, this coming Tuesday, 11 to 2 at JMC. And uh, that's it in terms of the updates. So that was good. As far as the market update, we still have one left. we got JJ. Are you going to be doing the lender update today? Oh, I'm up. Yeah. All right, man. Everybody clap them on up. Hey guys, good morning to you all. Hope you're doing well. I'm JJ Mac, Mac Pacific Mortgage. Always good to see you. Happy Thursday. Um, all right, so 
I'm actually, it's actually fun for me to get up here now because interest rates are going down. You guys yeah. want to see me. It's the other way around, and they were going up. So, um, as you know, things are going down. We had a crazy week because of the fact of uh, the Japanese Nakia, you know, the Nakia, I can't even say the word, but their currency over there was just deflating. And basically, what happened was um, it hit all of the world and it made it to where our rates got a lot better, our, our mortgage rates, but our, it hit our stock market. I'm not sure if you guys looked at your 401ks, your crops. Oh, yeah. You probably shouldn't, but <laughs> it was not good. And so basically, it came, it made the Fed want to get together and they, it, they're potentially, they're meeting on the 15th and we're going to see if they have an emergency session to lower rates. We'll see if it happens or not, but if it doesn't, I'm sure they're going to end up lowering rates in September. So it's a good thing that we, I mean, it's obviously not a good thing that our you know 401ks are down, but it's a good thing that the interest rates are going down. And um, so I want to really touch on that really quickly, because I know a lot of you are probably thinking, great, they're going to lower the rates, probably a half a percent, maybe a quarter percent, but a half a percent more than likely. When they do that, is it going to lower your client's rates by a half a percent on that day? No, it doesn't lower it exactly the way that they say it. So to let your clients know, because they're going to look to you for, the, for this information, you can point them back to myself or the lender that you're working with, but that is going to be something that you need to make sure that they're aware of. If the rate today is at six and a quarter percent, all of a sudden the rate isn't at 5.75%. It's already probably baked into that interest rate because we've already seen that happen over this last few days. But that is saying that things are going to continue to trend this way, go down. So just make sure they know that things aren't happening overnight. Um, they are happening over time. So that's a good thing, though. Interest rates are going down. Uh, um, any questions on the rates before I move on from that? Okay, so basically I wanted to read something to you guys. Are any, is anybody here or does anybody have wives here that, that are part of like the Oprah club? Anybody like, read the Oprah books and stuff? Well, my wife likes that kind of stuff. She's a big reader, yeah. I guess I'm the only one. So you guys might not know this quote then because she's- She's a very classy lady, yes. Um, but she sent me this quote the other day, and it, so they send you these emails every day, like these quotes and whatever. And so she thought this was great for something that I was dealing with in my life. But I thought, man, this is something that you guys are all dealing with as well, which is all this change that we're having right now. Next week on Monday, right? The car whole thing, and they could change your contracts and all that. She said, the greatest discovery of all time is that a person can change his future by merely, cha by merely changing his attitude. And I thought, I was like, oh my gosh, that just hit me. I was like... A lot of this stuff that we go through day to day is all about change, change, change. We got to change the way we're doing business. We're going to change the way we're, you know, going out and, you know, doing our open houses. We got to change the way that we're going and calling our clients. But if we can just change our attitudes within ourselves, I think a lot of the times all those things that we're changing outside of that externally are just going to fall into place. And so I think all you guys have been doing a really good job at that and making sure that you guys are all very happy with. Um, or very um, satisfied with where your businesses are and moving forward with it as such. Um, I wanted to talk about how the lenders are handling this whole thing really quick. I know you guys have probably heard this already, but I just wanted to make sure you absolutely knew. When all this comes out and you guys are having to negotiate these offers for your clients, and if you're the buyer's agent, you're going out and you're trying to get the, sell the seller, the listing side, to give you that credit for your buyer. That credit is not going to be utilized within that seller uh, concession. So if you have a 3% concession and that's the max that you can get for that loan, don't worry about it. That can be over and above. So just want to make sure you all know that, you know, moving forward with this by next week, um, you're not worrying about that. If some lender is telling you different, it's okay. Conventional, FHA, VA, the whole gamut. So if you're, you're going to be able to ask for those credits and still have it be on top of the actual seller credit. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So I want to make sure you understood that. Any Q&A there, please feel free to let me know. Okay, and then lastly, big thing right now, interest rates have gone down. Your clients, clients that you've closed homes on in the past, they're being called today, tomorrow, they're going to be getting calls from lenders. Those lenders are wanting them to do refinances on their homes. So what does that mean for you? If those lenders give their, your clients what they want, now all of a sudden they are incentivized 
to call that lender in the future and not you in the future. And so obviously you all have great relationships with your clients. I'm sure you're keeping in touch with them and doing all that stuff. But just a reminder, people are calling your clients every single day. And if they're not working with you, they could end up that, that buyer, that future buyer, that future seller could end up calling the lender first that you don't know and saying, hey, I think I'm ready to sell my house. Do you have anything, anybody that I could refer to you? So just make sure that you're keeping in touch with your clients, letting them know that you're probably going to hear from lenders. If you do want to do something, come talk to me first. And then that way they talk to you before they're hearing from Chase or Wells Fargo or whoever else is calling them and making them do something. Um, other than that, any questions today? Anybody have anything that they want to talk about? Any rates or anything at all? You guys have a 3 2 one still. Mm -hmm. Can you share a little about that? Yeah, so um, obviously you guys heard about the 2 one buy down. Um, there's also a 3 2 one buy down. And so as we continue for these rates to go down, and as we're seeing these go continue to go down, if you're able to get these costs covered from a seller, um, you're going to be able to really help your client over this next three years. Because we don't know when they're actually going to get to the lowest level or when they're going to get to four or maybe they'll be in the threes, who knows. But right now, if they're locking interest rate around 6%, usually with that two invite down, you're getting a four. But what if you could get to three? Would that help your buyer make the decision to purchase the house today? Absolutely. So those are options out there. And it's not just a two and buy down. There are options for three, two, one buy down as well. So that's, so that's what I would be doing, guys, right now. People are like, what are interest rates at? Well, uh, they've come down a lot. What, what are you looking for? What would, what would incentivize you to make a move? Like, what are you waiting for? Oh, man, if I get something in the five, if I get something in the fours, right? Okay, I can do that. Would you be open to speaking to my lender and discussing your different programs? And moving the ball down the field? Because now it's turning green. Now, and you're not lying. You're being 100% authentic. They just don't know about these different programs. And a uh, quick story, I went on a listing appointment. They were going to move out of state to Idaho, and they were really nervous about interest rates. I told them about this buy-down program, and um, they went out to Idaho, realized Idaho is not as cheap as they thought it was going to be. <laughs> and so they said, hey, John, we're going to hit pause until until um, we have some more funds saved up. But when we go with you, we are 100% going with you because you offer all these different programs through your mm -hmm. lender. Okay, And so it was the one-two combination. And yeah, sure, we provide a lot of our listings, but... The listings combined with the financing option is something that most agents do not communicate to their clients. Even if they offer it, they're not communicating it to their clients. So if you're working with buyers, communicate the financing option. If working with sellers, communicate the financing option because if they're selling, they're probably also buying wherever they end up, even if it's in a state. So is that helpful? You guys are hopping the phone today. Hey, hey, I, I, or even do an Instagram post, right? A social media post. Hey, are you looking for an interest rate in the threes? Reach out to me. I, I got you. Super simple. You can even do it with Brandon hanging around. By the way, give a round of applause for Brandon. You guys know Brandon? He's like uh, photography, real estate photography, like, uh, what's the word? Legends. Legends. <laughs> so if you're up on Instagram, show archives. But anyways, thank you so much, JJ. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Round of applause for JJ. So today, we had a crazy meeting last week. We said we blew out the office because it was on contracts and paperwork. And I thought, wow. Well, what could be more exciting than contracts and paperwork? <laughs> escrow. So let's see if we can blow out the room doing escrow. So um, but so what we have are the Dose Heathers, and we also have Margaret. This, If you have your preferred escrow company, stay with them. But if you are looking for somebody, if you're new to the area, if you don't have those connections, sit back, and uh, and we're going to learn something again. All right? All right. Let's pop up the Heathers. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm one of the Heathers. I'm Heather Durboro. This is my partner and good friend, Heather Beerworth. And we brought Margaret Harris and Cassie Helton. Um, they work with the Made for More team, and we are lucky to have them. Um, before we get started on your guys' something good, I heard diapers, I heard death, and I heard divorce. So those are the majority of our escrows right now. Um, those life events have an 18 to 20 percent uh, turnover in the next 12 months. So we have signed in sheets. Don't feel obligated to sign in. We're not going to spam you. But um, if you want to talk more about the life events and how we can help you get those leads, um, put your contact info on that. And then we're also going to be sprinkling in some tools that we offer. And again, we'll share those if we have your contact information. 
but we will get started. Uh oh, yeah, bear with us while we do all that. Transitions. <laughs> so, why in Chicago Title? So, we work with the Fidelity National Title Group. We are the largest insurer in the nation, and we have brands in all 50 states. Obviously, we have other title companies in the room that are amazing as well. We just want you to be aware of when you choose a title and escrow company, make sure you're not just going with ABC title that opened up in their garage yesterday. Okay. We just also want you to be aware of that. So we are a full service title and escrow company. I bring that up uh, because in Southern California, title and escrow are done by two different companies. Um, in other states, they don't have escrow. They have attorney states. But here in Northern California, title and escrow are provided by the same company. Um, and we would hope that you choose Chicago Title. Um, we have a ton of tools and tech that will help elevate your business. Um, our company has literally spent $1 billion um, on tools and tech. So um, it is $1 billion. <laughs> and then your security is our priority. So um, with our in here platform, that is our digital start package, um, all of your client's information is safe. You have flyers on your desk. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about a big issue right now, which is seller impersonation fraud. So please join our Zoom class for that. Um, and then the other page is our upcoming classes. And then what is title insurance? Um, I know it's kind of tricky because car insurance, life insurance, health insurance, you have that insurance because you're banking on something happening in the future. Title insurance protects what has happened in the past. Um, it's defined as an insurance policy purchased from a title insurance company, us, when the home or property is purchased or lent against. It protects the buyer or borrower and the lender if a loss occurs from a property dispute. Um, the title insurance company searches public records, such as liens, claims, deeds, tax records, or whatnot, to make sure there are no problem in the title's ownership and the history for the property you are buying. Um, and that title report, that's called a preliminary title report. Margaret and Cassie, these are the three basic types of um, title insurance. What is the most popular? Alta. Okay. And then we have this. Again, if you fill out your information, we can send you this PDF. You can snip it, brand it to yourself. But this is just um, a form of why some reasons you need title insurance. Um, technically, it is optional if you have a cash purchase. How many times have you seen someone waive title insurance? Yeah, it'd be silly too because it's a one-time policy um, and that's negotiable on who pays it. So we do have a flyer of what is customary in certain counties. Typically out here, the seller is paying title insurance and then they're splitting between the buyer and seller the escrow. But again, that's all negotiable. And then what is escrow? We are the neutral third party in the real estate transaction. It's our job to make sure that the contract is upheld. Um, again, we are neutral, so we're not favoring who is directing escrow. We have to stay the neutral third party. Um, and then that escrow is governed by your escrow officer. <laughs> Margaret Harris. <laughs> Margaret Harris, everyone. <laughs> And this is a good um, spot to take a picture of what escrow does and doesn't do. So we request a title report from the title department. Um, escrow prepares the recording documents and instruction for escrow. We serve as the bank, so we're handling all the money. We are distributing funds. We are collecting the earnest money deposit. We secure all the signatures. Um, we pay off all the liens, judgments, or whatnot. Um, and with that, that's why it's super important to pre-open escrow. So prior to having a buyer, we really want you to pre-open escrow so that the team can get started on ordering all of the things that need to be paid off, you know, examining what's on the prelim. Like I said, we collect all the funds and we confirm all the parties' conditions are met. What we don't do is create the title report. That's the title department. So you'll never really talk to your title officer. All communication is going to go through Margaret. We don't negotiate terms, that's your job, and we don't act as interpreters. So we can't give legal advice, we can't give tax advice, we can't tell your client how to hold escrow or I mean hold title. 
Um, this one's wild because it just happened a couple weeks ago. We can't deliver or hold keys or other personal items. So we had someone come in, a seller, very irritated with their agent, who is not a CSP, very irritated with their agent, just dropped the keys and the garage door opener at the signing. I never want to talk to my agent again. We have that here. Oh. So my ex drops her calls me. She's like, we have this. You have to give it back to the agent. I was so scared. I'm like, we can't be liable having this. You need to come here, get this, and give it <laughs> give it to the buyer's agent. And that was wild. So we do not do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Heather flowed really nicely. I'm just going to say it now. I'm the nervous one. My voice will crack. Bear with me. <laughs> um, but so... Again, I know a little bit of snooze fest. A lot of you already know this information, but obviously when does escrow start? So as Heather mentioned, it's really important to pre-open your escrow. There can be some things on that title report that they have to get working on now. So the more time that you give them, the more communication you do, that's only going to help. Um, again, obviously it's customary for the listing agent to you know, open a pre-open, um, but in California, it is the buyer's choice to select the title and escrow company. Obviously in this area, that's not generally how it goes. We never want you to lose a deal over title and escrow. So if you have someone that's, you know, writing in their company on the back end, you know, chat with your escrow officer. If they had to do a lot of work to, you know, clear some things and they've already done some stuff, that that agent may want to keep it with Chicago because we can't send that over to another company. So the, the clock starts again. Um, forgive me. I've never seen it where it's the buyer's choice. I see buyers ask, but it's always the listing agent's choice. Yeah. And they'll usually say pre-open with whoever. Mm -hmm. So, so it's customary from, from our, it's customary in California that the buyer gets to choose, but it is per kind of area in Plaster County, Sacramento County. What we're used to is the listing. Um, does it, any side can do it. Any, I mean, it's negotiable on any side. Um, but that in our area, it is customary for listing. Yeah, I had a buyer request in the contract um, to change the title company because the title company, the seller had, um, the fees were really high. And when they got a quote from another title company, it was actually competitive low. However, the title and escrow fee are, um, they say they are regulated by the commission department, but um, there was a lot of difference with some of the stuff like loan tie-in fee and the junk fees and all those. So they we end up changing the escrow. So basically, like, a good way to sum that up is your buyer has the option to write in on the contract who they want to use. Now, whether you accept that or not. Yeah, that's, that's a, a negotiable piece, clearly, Correct. just like anything else. Yeah, so I was just shocked by, like, buyer's yeah. choice. I've never seen, I mean, yeah. maybe that's a common thing they can like write in. area can, specific. Yeah. But I've, I've always seen it with the seller's yeah. choice and listing agent use these. And we, of course, we would love for you to write in Chicago title. A lot of the time when writing in the title company wins is if the listing is with an out of area agent that you then can write in your local preferred title. Yeah. And, you know, again, we don't want you to lose a deal over title and escrow. There, we definitely had some that the buyer wrote in and it was a clean prelim. So it's like, you know, but when, when there's a lot on the prelim, you may want to stick with what you have. But obviously the escrow officially begins with an accepted offer. And then the buyer, um, buyers in contract earnest money has been submitted to the escrow holder. These are the direct parties that the escrow officer will be in contact with. And then prior getting into contract, um, you can confirm all owners um, of the property by pulling the grant deed. So even going before going to the listing appointment, you can use premier services that we offer our clients and you can get that grant deed to make sure that you're sitting down with who owns the home and see how title is held. Um, obviously, again, we'll preach as always to pre-open the Chicago title and get the ball rolling there. And then review the preliminary title report. Um, we do a whole class on this. Obviously, Margaret does a fantastic job of reviewing it herself, calling attention to anything that may, you know, need some help from you or just get working on. Um, but it's important for you to, to read it too. And do you need to know all of it? Absolutely not. But there are definitely points throughout the prelim that you want to be able to have your eyes on it too. She's one person, there's an element of human error. And if we can get more eyes on the document, then that's going to be better for everyone. Um, and then a couple things, of course, these two come down to communication. If there's an HOA, you know the company, let your escrow officer know. 
If they're solar, um, and that just doesn't mean the panels on top of the house, again, we do a whole class on this, um, let your escrow officer know. There, there's a lot we can do ahead of time as opposed to last minute. Um, so we're in contract, now what? So if you go to Chicago Title Library, you can um, get our buyer seller guide, gives just a lot of information to your clients, um, obviously the escrow process. Um, and when you're doing an open an email, include all parties, include your TC, let them know who needs to be on this. For the most part, all escrow officers in Chicago, they're gonna stay on one email chain the entire time. So let's get everyone on there that we need. Um, and then, you know, escrow is obviously going to uphold the agreed upon terms of the contract and honor the lender's instructions, if applicable, to the completion of the uh, transaction. Therefore, um, make sure we have an executed contract and any addendums. The one thing I'll share with you about addendums is, obviously, if you have one through four that you've given to your escrow officer and there's a fifth one that doesn't really concern them, they're not going to know. But if you're giving them one through four, but three is missing, they're going to need to see three. And you might be confused. Well, it doesn't have to do with them. They have to deliver a fully executed uh, file. So that is why your escrow officer is reaching out for a certain addendum. That, why? Because they have to. Um, and then the, uh, another thing that does slow down when we go into contract, just a reminder for you, is the, if you're the buyer's agent, get all the contact information to the escrow officer. Sometimes it slows down a little bit. Sometimes they come to us and they're like, you can't get a hold of this client to get the buyer's information. So just, you know, make sure when you get over that email, you're in contract, get that info going. And then um, this one too, let, let your escrow officer know that your clients might be on vacation during the transaction. Even if you're at the beginning and they're going to be traveling at the end, this again, all comes down to communication. There's a lot that we can do and set up, but if you tell us last minute, then everyone's scrambling and that could delay. And that's the last thing we want. We want you to look like the hero. So let us know before, let us know as soon as you know. And then provide the following information for your client. So again, obviously all contact information, if there's any divorces, deaths, or trusts, we do a whole class on this. Um, we may need copies of the divorce decree, death certificates, and trust. Again, contact your escrow officer. What do they need? Uh, because you may not need all of that, obviously, but you you know have communication there. Um, if your client is married, divorced, separated, are they on good terms? You know, we can set up different sign different time signings, like. You know, the last, I remember one of my escrow was sharing with me, she was so excited to say, you know, we're going to close on this date. Agent never told them that it is not a happy divorce. And it, it was not a good phone call. And then the escrow officer is like, well, that. <laughs> so just let us know. It, you know, we, we can we can make adjustments. So happy for you, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, of course, again, more, more communicating any issues that you're aware of. Um, obviously doesn't, you know, has specific communication needs. Um, dementia, Alzheimer's, this may require doctor's notes. Talk with your escrow officer. They're going to set you up to get prepared to do the best you can. Um, if your seller is in a trust, they have to have a bank account in the name of the trust because that's where the proceeds will be, be deposited. So your sellers don't know that. That's you bringing the information to them. Um, and then, you know, uh, the power of attorney if needed. Obviously, you know, we're a little away from um, COVID, but like one of the things is, you know, when they travel out of the country and we have to set up embassy sightings, those take time. Um, but again, you know, if we have the time behind us, we can set power of attorney up before they go away out of town. If we, you know, need to, if they're in the country and we just need to sign up and set up a mobile deposit, again, communication will help. And then the prelim, um, we're not going to go into all of this. Um, we do offer a prelim and a red flags uh, uh, class, but the prelim is obviously short for preliminary title report um, prepared by the issuing title policy and the outline of exceptions of coverage. It shows who the vested owner is, the parcel of land. Um, it shows the status of property taxes, past due and payable. Recorded liens and encumbrances um, that will not be issued against if the title policy is issued. It shows necessary items the title underwriting department may need in order to issue a policy or notes, which can be required as provisions. 
and the prelim is the outcome of the title search. And this is just front page. Um, these are just some things that we always, you know, we highlight. So this is obviously order of the Chicago title. This would be your name. The effective date is um, as of the uh, most recent recorded date, right? Then, yeah. Um, and then obviously the address. This is one that you would want to pay attention to. Is that the correct address? Is it, uh, this is the policy. Are these the correct names? Is that how it's held? Um, so just a couple little things. And then again, as Heather touched on, we have our start in here. Um, di digital opening package for your clients. We also have an here, in here platform for you as the agent that you can track your entire escrow through the process and get notified of milestones. But again, the start in here is to keep your clients safe and get that earnest money deposit, get their contact info. And you guys can download that. It's in here, no space, I-N-H-E-I, no, <laughs> I-N-H-E-R-E. Um, and it's going to have all of your transactions with Chicago Title. So it's kind of like Uber, DoorDash, it lets you know where we are in the transaction. Um, and then all of that info is there for life. So if you ever need to access, you know, the EMD uh, receipt, HOA docs, um, the prelim, closing statement, it's all in there. So it's pretty cool. Oh, hey, Dan. I have a question. Yeah. Getting an increasing amount of requests for billing escrow, or full, like free the free escrow, right? Um, people want to put in carpet in their house, or they want to get their section one cleared, and they want to pay through that, pay for that through escrow, but they're not in listed yet, or they're mm. not, yeah, or they're not in contract. We've been burned on it a couple times, having provided the service, and then it falls out, or six months later, it still hasn't sold um is there any recourse like how do you get because like and i don't think it was with chicago but like in two situations like we never even heard that the escrow was terminated that's wow so sure. we have an invoice outstanding uh -huh. and it falls apart and and we're none the wiser six months down the road now because you know we're not yeah. trying to hammer these people for payment we understand the plan they put in place but then it falls out and we have no idea that it can't get a hold of anybody. So, can you guys speak to that at all? I mean, yeah, um, honestly, you would probably have to put something in a contract, right? To have your client sign. So, if it doesn't work, yeah, that's, that's, what, what, that's what we've done. Then they'll be responsible for paying, right. right? And also talk to the agent who you're working with and see, you know, like if it cancels, maybe it comes out of the earnest money deposit, right? Or, but it's not. Well, there's no earnest money. Well, it's not in right. contract. Mm. True. Yeah, no it's not something we would be able to right. address with you, but you would want to do it with your client. Uh, it's just a very gray area. Yeah, so the agent yeah, went dark on you too. The oh, agent, 100%. The, they lost yeah, listing. yeah, it's this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So if I, I mean, yeah. I, the reason I bring it up is it's a request that we get more and more yeah. often. I've had conversations with you know with my competitors. We're in the same situation, and we want to help you guys out. We want to help make those properties more ready for market. But like, there's massive recourse on our end. It's it's such a, it's such a liability. Um, so don't just tell your clients that this is something that you can get done. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah, pretty yeah. tricky. Like, yeah, as an agent, I would not do it. Well, then maybe you have the actual owner sign yeah, a contract that's, that's too. We yes, have, we have a contract with yeah, them, for sure. Because I think stagers do that too, mm -hmm. right? If it doesn't, you know, sell. It it's just it, it must, yeah, what a it mess. Makes it yeah. Best. If it falls out or the listing gets, you know, it done. makes you want to say no. 100%. You know, unless there's yeah. an executed contract. Yeah. Um, these are a list of red flags. This doesn't mean that we can't do anything about it. This is just a reminder that everything's fixable, everything's figure outable, um, which is a great book to add on. <laughs> so I do read other books than uh, trash novels. <laughs> uh, but these are some red flags. Our prelim makes it real easy if some of these issues come up. Literally on the preliminary title report, it goes in red. Yellow, you're good to go. Red, these are red flags that we need to address that may, may take some time. Specifically, lately, solar is the big the big one. Um, it's a nightmare. We can't facilitate that. Margaret can't handle that. It's really between your buyers and sellers, um, and they they actually have to do things to get the ball rolling for that. <laughs> And then this just goes back to the prelim. Always review it. Ask questions um, about it. Review it with your client. Don't procrastinate. Um, and Margaret's always happy to answer any questions that you have, whether the file is with Chicago or not. Maybe you are more comfortable talking to a specific escrow officer. Pick up the phone. Um, 
she can absolutely answer any questions. Um, we ought to throw this in every presentation. It's real. <laughs> we, we don't want to scare you, but we do. Yeah. So um, all of our wire information is sent again securely through our portal. We're never going to send it to you to send to your clients. So um, just be aware. And this is also um, what I was mentioning, mentioning before of um, what's customary in different counties of who pays what. Um, example, in the Bay Area, typically buyers pay all the fees. Um, and then this has also the city fees as well. So city of Sacramento as a city fee. Um, other than that, you're good here locally. And then this is a good thing to also screenshot um, of what makes this smooth, smooth closing. So again, we want to make sure that the purchase agreement is fully executed. Um, let us know the best way to reach your clients. Maybe your clients work nights. Let us know the, so we're not blowing them up during the day. They don't have to necessarily have an email address. Let us know that. Maybe they're elderly and, you know, we need to do things super old school. We absolutely can. Um, provide the commission demand early. Make sure your client has a valid photo ID. Um, and then here's a big one. Review the estimated closing statement prior to signing. Their numbers, again, we're human. We could make a mistake. So review that prior to getting to the table. Margaret Black. So I have to review more than the CDA? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, keep for notified of any last minute agreements, changes, issues, delays. Talk to your client about wire fraud. And then this is a big one that I want uh, Margaret or Cassie to speak on. Let your clients know the difference between signing, recording, closing. Signing doesn't mean same day keys. We have no control over the county. Um, especially when it was COVID or the fires, we have no control over when they close. Um, there are wire cutoff times, different county cutoff times. So can you explain what the best way between signing, closing, recording? Yeah, so a lot of lenders will call a closing date as the signing date, as where we obviously call it your signing date. Come on up here, Margaret, so we can see it yeah. online too. Um, so the closing date isn't necessarily obviously the closing date when the lenders speak of it or other agents or people involved. Um, for us, the signing date and clients are always asking, is the signing date the day that I get my money, they get my keys, that we're closed, everything's done, and I'm always explaining, no, it's not. So a lot of the outer counties have early cutoff times or docs have to be there before for some of the smaller ones. So always make sure to check with us or um, we'll let you know what our expected closing date is based on the county and when you can report. So say we fund and, you know, get everything ready on a Thursday, but it's Amador County and we have to release by 10 a.m. Hypothetically speaking. Or, <laughs> <laughs> this happened two days ago. Yeah. Hypothetically speaking. Docs have to be at the county, you know, for a certain county for e-reporting. And so that kind of delayed us one day because everybody thought we were going to close on a certain day, but the county was not being helpful with us. Yeah. And then, and then also, like, this is huge. I get this question all the time. Like, so there's like, I'm not moving out till I get my money. I'm like, bro, you don't own the house yeah. anymore. Can you explain when, when can they expect to get their money, the sellers? So I say usually within 24 hours of our closing date, which is the recording date. So okay. we'll, we will do our best to get the wires out. If we close early in the morning, get recording confirmation by 10, 11, 12, usually we can get them out same day so they have their funds same day, mm -hmm. but also some banks will take a little bit longer or they'll hold the funds so they won't have them right away. But typically within 24 hours of our actual recording date. Unless it's on a weekend, Friday. Yeah, 24 business hours. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And you better get out. What if, what if the house catches on fire and it's not even your house anymore? Right. Like, get out. Yeah. I'm just saying yeah. I've been told. <laughs> Any questions on closing, recording, signing? And this is <laughs> down, right. that, that is down in ChicagoTitleLibrary.com. So um, again, feel free to change this, brand it, put it in your listing presentation, or you know maybe you give it to your clients as we approach as we approach closing. Um, and we can share with you this. This is the extra closing process, like Margaret um, stated. This is when you're officially closed. Is when the recorder uh, confirms. Um, well, the property is closed. And um, most important slide right here. Here's all our contact, <laughs> contact info. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate you guys' time. Any any questions for Margaret since you have an escrow officer here? Any crazy files, red flags, or just random questions if you're still awake?
<laughs> so I have a call at 1130 with somebody. Uh, it's two people. They I don't know all the details yet, but it looks like it's a probate deal. And they're just wanting to know what happens next. If you were in my shoes, like what how would you communicate that to the sellers? Well, we would definitely need to pull the three numbers to figure out what needs to be done. But if they're you know in the probate, I would probably get that process started because it could take which means they contact an attorney, a yes. probate attorney, yes. right? We That's their have next step. Do you have do you have probate attorneys you recommend, or I can send you a okay. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Which thank you the uh, the lead in. Everyone get a trust. Yeah. A trust is a mess. Speaking of trust, the guy in the back. If you don't have one, raise your hand, Chad. If you were on the call yesterday, we did a presentation on a lot of things, uh, a lot of numbers, a lot of retirement accounts are specific to you guys, but we ended with. Trust education. So he didn't watch it. He wants to talk to me, answer questions. He does them cheap. He does them fast. What else do you need to know? <laughs> Go to Chad. Go to Chad. Cheaping fast. Chad, cheap, cheap, fast. cheap fast and well. Cheap fast and well. Yeah. <laughs> he has to get a tattoo. <laughs> All right. We need to All right. Thank you so much. You too. All right. So the takeaways that I that how this how this presentation will help you close clients, help you do more business with buyers or sellers, is you have to do you have to verbalize, you have to communicate what it is you're doing for your clients. And part of that is having an escrow team. They're part of your team. So hey, my escrow team has wire fraud protection in place. You know, did you said you're speaking with another agent? Did they did they mention that too? Oh no, they didn't. Oh, you're kidding. You're kidding. All right. Does your they offer title protection? Um, a lot of our clients are really appreciative because they may own um, investment properties, and then they get something mailed to their door. And like, hey, why? What's this thing from Chicago? What is that? Or I tell them in advance, you're going to be getting something in from Chicago Title, verifying that you are the owner. This is just to make sure that you're safe and your property is protected. Oh, really? You guys do that? You go the extra mile? Yes. And then a lot of people have busy lives. A lot of people are selling homes. You know, in the summer season when they're also on vacation. So guess what? If we understand that. We recognize that. That's what we offer, international and mobile notaries. So whether you're here, you know, in the local area or whether you're in another state or whether you're in another country, we can help close that deal for you. You don't have to skip a beat. You don't have to change your vacation plans. Oh, really? Yes. And so make sure you're communicating these things to, to your clients. Okay. Is this helpful? Yes. Yeah. All right. So just we ended the meeting a little bit early, two minutes early. So that way we can. Oh, yeah. Clark. Clark yeah. has one last thing. Yeah, one last thing. I forgot to mention a new agent. Welcome, Stacy Elise. She's on the call also. Stacy, welcome. Part of the team, lived up in Pollock Pines. Beautiful part of the world, Pollock. Yeah. All right, so we're going to hang out. We're going to take some photos with Brandon. You all get to be models today. So just hang out, please, for 30 minutes. Don't do this for me. Don't do this for Rob. Do it for Brandon. Okay, just 30 minutes. All right, have a fantastic day online. See you, everybody.